can't believe I was so nervous last night. I mean, my testimony could not have gone any better. I told you. But did you see the way they responded to me? I mean, I had members of Congress. Congress hanging on my every word. And why shouldn't they be? You were calm and collected and compassionate. Really? Mm. Room service! You ordered room service? Yeah, I called it in before we left. I figured a celebratory brunch was in order. <laughs> yes, just uh, put it on the table there. Well, but what if, you know, I had it done well? I knew you would. How about some champagne? Yes, I would love some. What about you, though? Uh, I've got that covered. It's not as much fun, but mm. it has bubbles. <laughs> Will there be anything else? Uh, no, I think that's everything for now. Can you, uh, do me a favor and make sure no calls come to this room? Right, Me. A hero. I seriously almost turned around to see if the congresswoman was talking to somebody behind me. And... I I'm going to do it. What she said, I want to go talk to children about being compassionate and about being generous. I think maybe I'll even contact Emma's principal when we get home. You should. Hmm. Mm. Ah, what a day. <laughs> it's not over yet. We still have the reception at the British Embassy. God. You really think the president's going to be there? Well, that's what Congressman Wilton said. I can't believe we might meet the president. <gasps> what am I going to wear? What are you talking about? You look great. No, what? The subcommittee has already seen me in this dress. I mean, I, I, I brought another dress, but that was just for a dinner, not for some fancy government reception. What about my hair? You think there's a salon in the hotel? Annie, you could put on a brown paper bag and a skull cap, and you'd still be the most gorgeous woman there. How about a toast? As to what? To you. Still thinking about what to wear tonight? I was thinking about Brooke and Adam. What's happening back home? Crazy, right? What is? I'm focused on that right now. I mean, hello. Look at us, JR. <laughs> we are in this beautiful hotel. In this incredible town. With, with history everywhere around us. I mean, can, can you feel that? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the power. The, the energy. People are making decisions around us right this second that affect this country. No, no, what am I saying? That affect this world. It just... Oh, it just makes Pine Valley seem so... insignificant somehow. You did a really good thing today. I know. You know how I know? Because people told me. <laughs> they, they commended me. They made me feel... really special instead of... Instead of making me feel like I'm a nuisance. Hmm. Is that how you feel at home? It's pretty much how I felt my entire life. Until today. I know what you're thinking right now. About me. Prove it. So you told the men. Everything looks so different here, don't you think? I mean, the lights, the people. It's so easy to get swept up in it all. But the reality is, nothing has changed. How do you mean? Well, you almost had me with that, that toast of yours. Telling what a great job I did today. 
And I really wanted to believe you. But you didn't. It's that thing you do. It's that thing you do with your eyes. It's like you, you look right through me or something. It's, I, it's, I can't explain it. Why don't you try? <laughs> no, what I am saying is, I know I'm never going to be able to change what you think of me. Which is? Oh, which is that I am, I don't know, a selfish, two-faced bitch? Good guess? <laughs> you couldn't be more wrong. Mm. Really? Yeah. Really? When I saw you in front of Congress, you were brave and smart and generous. I'm, I mean it. I mean, I was honestly impressed. So if I was looking into you, though I'm pretty sure I don't have that secret power, I want you to know that's what I saw. I haven't been this happy in a really long time. Yeah, well, it looks good on you. Well, thanks. Well, it feels even better. <laughs> it feels really good to look in the mirror and like the person staring back at me. I had forgotten what that felt like. And if I'm being honest, which bizarrely enough I am, I, um, I owe all that to you. <laughs> you owe me. Well, listen, I know it sounds weird, but, I mean, if you think about it, if you hadn't gotten sick, I wouldn't have been able to help you. And I wouldn't be standing here right now, feeling like this. So, thank you. For having cancer. No, no, that's not what I mean. That's I'm, not what I'm saying. I, I'm kidding. <sighs> but if anyone should be thanking anyone here, you saved me, Annie. Maybe we saved each other. Who would have thought, huh? <laughs> you, of all people, would make me realize it's still possible to like myself. I'm glad that you're in a good place. Hmm. Well, I almost wasn't. I mean, I almost didn't... I told you, I had very mixed emotions about giving you my bone marrow. Yeah. Because of how I felt about you. At the end of the day, you stepped up. Except I didn't do it for you. I did it for Adam, or at least that's what I told myself. But in reality, I did it for me. To make Adam love me more. You, know, you want to know what's worse? I, um, I, I told you how much I hated you when you were lying there unconscious. Yeah. Yep, I ripped into you on your deathbed. Classy. <laughs> the feeling's mutual. <laughs> See what we did there, though? Hated. What? Was. Why don't we keep those feelings in the past where they belong? What do you say? I say that sounds nice. Mm. I should go. Yeah? I'm gonna go get ready. Prosecution calls Adam Chandler.